So in this video, we're going to go over how to find the angle of inclination of a tangent plane. But before we do an actual calculation, let's just look at what the general principle is. If we have a curve in space, whatever it looks like, so my two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional curve, and at some point x naught, y naught, z naught, we have a plane that is tangent to that point. We've already identified that if we can calculate the gradient at that point, so the gradient of f at x naught, y naught, z naught, that the gradient of f gives us a vector that is perpendicular to the surface and thus perpendicular to the tangent plane. And so in a previous video, we used the gradient to construct the tangent plane by using the fact that to find the equation of a tangent plane we need a vector that is normal to the to the plane. So the angle of inclination is going to be the angle uh, uh, the angle of incline with respect to the z-axis. So if I just think about how the z-axis lays you know think about the, the z-axis as being kind of a vectory kind of thing and move it wherever you need to. The angle of inclination is going to be the angle that the z-axis would make with the gradient vector. So if we call that angle theta, we're looking to find that angle theta that the gradient vector makes when inclined with respect to the z-axis. And, and the idea is that all we need is a vector parallel to the z-axis. And the easiest vector parallel to the z-axis is the vector k that we've already looked at. It's that unit vector, vector of length one parallel to the z-axis. So if we can find the angle that the gradient vector makes with the vector k, where k is the vector 0, 0, 1, then we know the angle that the gradient vector makes with the z-axis, and thus we know the angle of, at which the plane, the tangent plane, has been inclined. And from previous work that we've done, we've done, we know that the cosine of the angle between any two vectors, u and v, can be found by doing u dot v divided by the size of u and the size of v. And in this case, our u and our v will be the gradient vector and the vector k. So the cosine of the angle formed by the gradient vector and the unit vector parallel to the z-axis is just going to be the gradient of f dotted with k divided by the size of the gradient vector times the size of the vector k. But k is a unit vector. It has length 1. So we don't even need the size of k in the denominator there because it won't change the calculation. And if I think about the gradient vector here, this dot product, it's going to have partial derivative with respect to x, partial derivative with respect to y, partial derivative with respect to z, and we're dotting it with the vector 0, 0, 1. Well, when we take this dot product, it's actually going to simplify. We're just going to get the gradient with respect to z evaluated at x naught, y naught, z naught, the point, uh, the point at which we're finding the tangent plane divided by the size of the gradient vector at that point x naught, y naught, z naught. The other thing to realize is that if we want to know the angle, the angle formed by the gradient and the z-axis, if the, if the gradient vector happens to be something like 3, 3, 12, where we have a common factor that can be factored out, it would also be the case that we could look for the angle formed by the smaller vector and the um, positive z-axis or the vector 0, 0, 1. So we don't necessarily have to be putting the gradient in here. We could be putting into this calculation any scalar multiple of the gradient to find the angle of inclination of the plane. And in general, if we can use a smaller vector to do the calculation, it's going to save us some simplification work. It saves us some effort if we can use a vector of smallest length when we do our calculations. So find the angle of inclination of the plane that is tangent to 2xy minus z cubed equals 0 at the point 2, 2, 2. So we want to know the uh, inclination the tangent plane at this particular point is going to make. We don't even need to know the equation of the tangent plane. 
because we know that the gradient vector is perpendicular to that tangent plane and we're really looking to find what angle does the gradient vector make with the z-axis. So we need a function f of x, y, z equal to zero. We calculate the gradient of this function, but we already have it in the equals zero form right here. So our function big F of x, y, z is just going to be the function 2xy minus z cubed. So we have this level surface right here that we're working with, and we know how to calculate the gradient of F. The gradient of F is just going to be the partial derivative with respect to x, the partial with respect to y, and the partial with respect to z. So in this particular case, the partial derivative of, with respect to y there's no y, sorry, with respect to x, there's no x in this term. So we just look at this. We're holding 2y as constant coefficients on x, so the derivative is just 2y. Partial derivative with respect to y will hold the 2x constant as constant coefficient on the y, so the derivative of 2xy with respect to y is just 2x, and the partial derivative with respect to z is just going to be minus 3 z squared. So this is the gradient vector for our surface f of x, y, z equals zero or two x, y minus z cubed equals zero. We're interested in the tangent plane and the angle of inclination of a tangent plane at a specific point. So we need to calculate the gradient at that specific point. So the gradient of f at two, two, two. And because the two is showing up in each of these, I, can, I know something's gonna be able to factor out. So I get two times y is four, two times x is four, negative three times four is negative 12, and I see that I can factor out a four. So if I get one, one, negative three. So I wanna find the angle of inclination the gradient vector makes with the z-axis, and it would be sufficient to find the angle of inclination that this vector which is parallel to the gradient vector makes with the z-axis. So to calculate the cosine of that angle, I'm going to take the cosine of theta is going to equal, it's the dot product of the, two, of the vectors. So I'm going to use the scale down vector. I'm going to take the dot product of 1, 1, negative 3 with my vector that is parallel to the z-axis, the vector 0, 0, 1. And then I'm going to divide it by the size of the product of the two vectors, but the size of this vector is one, so I don't need to worry about it. So I'm just gonna divide by the size of this vector here. So the size of this vector is given by one squared plus one squared plus negative three squared, the sum of the squares of the vector components, which is the square root of nine plus one plus one is the square root of 11. So I get a square root of 11 down here. Technically, I need to multiply by the size of this vector, but the size of this vector is just one, so I can ignore it in the calculation. And when I take this dot product, it's gonna be really difficult. We're just gonna get the product of the z components, which is negative three, and it'll be over the square root of 11. So this is the cosine of theta. I need to know the angle of inclination, so I need to know what theta is. So I take the arc cosine of both sides. So theta is the arc cosine of negative three over the square root of 11. This is the exact angle of inclination. And if I needed to approximate it, I would do that in a calculator or computer algebra system.